My name is Mercy Cohen. And I'm Devin Snyder. Mary Musgrove, Exploration, Encounter, and Exchange in the Life of an Indian Princess. Baby, nota, 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 of all kind. I am see, books he knows, love like I eat, mojito, I am see. Baby, Hello, did you like that? That was a song by my people, the Creeks. My name is Mary Musgrove, and welcome to my trading post, the Calpin. My Creek people know me as their Indian princess, Kusa Panakisa, but my father was an Englishman. Last year, in 1732, my husband John and I moved here to Yamakra on the Savannah River. Because we were a part of both cultures, we were able to help the English explorers settle peacefully with the Creeks. Less than a year later, news reached our post of the arrival of more English settlers, and their leader, a man named Oberfall, General James Oberfall. Parliament had sanctioned this land for the exploration and establishment of a new colony, Georgia, in honor of England's beloved King George II. The Creek Indians here are cordial, if not welcoming. If only I could find an interpreter, someone who could assist me in my encounters and exchanges with these natives. Hello, welcome to the Calpin. How may I help you? Yes, yes. How do you do? My name is General James Oglethorpe, and I am here to request an audience with Mary Musgrove. I am she. I've heard much about you. Capital! I've heard wonderful things about you and your husband, John. Ah, they say you make a marvellous interpreter. I have heard also that this is the general meeting place at which you interpret conferences between the Creeks and the English traders. Indeed, sir. Would you be so inclined to serve as my interpreter for the time that I work on the establishment of this colony? It will take years of hard work, but I will gladly pay you £100 per year for your assistance in my explorations and encounters with your people. General James Overport, you make a very tempting offer. My husband John and I will have an answer for you as soon as possible. She said yes. Sir, I was unaware you had discovered a lady worthy of your attention. <laughs> no, no. Mary Musgrove. She oh. has agreed to translate discussions, host activities, and supply provisions during our explorations of the colony, as well as our encounters with her people. What <laughs> I have a premonition that because of Mary, the colony of Georgia will have an establishment more peaceful than any other. What a worthy encounter. Excellent. Our first meeting is tomorrow. For the next 12 years, I translated for Oberfort and used my position as the Creek's princess to sway their favor in his direction. I was respected and valued as my position as translator and negotiator rose in demand. My good friend, John Wesley, was a great source of encouragement. My friends in England, Oberfort's interpreter is one Mrs. Musgrove. She understands both languages being educated amongst the English. She can read and write and is a well-civilized woman. She is likewise to teach us the Indian tongue. I right, send my warmest regards, John Wesley. To my associate pastors in Germany, General Oberhoff's interpreter, Mistress Mary Musgrove, has a special talent for knowing the equivalent of Indian terms in English. I hope to learn her native language soon. I know this encounter has not been moot for the sharing of the gospel. Sincerely yours, John Martin Borges, pastor at Ebenezer, Georgia. To the Georgia trustees. My translator, Mary Musgrove, has done more for us than I ever expected. Her talent for translating is only exceeded by her diplomatic sense of negotiation and helpfulness with my explorations of the new colony, as well as her assistance with my encounters and exchanges with her people. With utmost respect, General Oglethorpe. During his exploration of the colony of Georgia, Oglethorpe sought even in initial encounters to arrange exchanges between the Creeks and the English. Slowly, the English formed ties of friendship with the Creeks. Much of Oglethorpe's time, he had other problems as well. The Spanish 
Lord to occupy Florida were not as understanding as the Creeks. Around 1740, they began pressing in on the English settlements. I was able to help with this as well by using my royal status to persuade my people to send Indian soldiers to fight with Oglethorpe on the front lines. A letter from Oglethorpe, ma'am. Thank you. Just in time. Dear Mrs. Musgrove, I thank you for sending the Indians. They have been a much needed addition to my depleted men as we defend England's newest colony against the Spanish intrusion. Sincerely, General James Oglethorpe. Of course, what better way to elevate my status among the English authorities? I gained not only their English respect, but also their business. As Father always said, the best way to succeed is to make yourself invaluable. Although I expected the Musgroves to comply with every colonial change, this soon proved to be a major misconception. Mary, you are aware of the new alcohol prohibition laws, and yet you and your husband are refusing to submit to these laws. We can't submit to this law. Oh. You've come and settled in this land and expect me and my people to adopt all your new ways. To give up alcohol would be to give up part of our culture, and it would sever the delicate bonds of peace that you've worked so hard to form. Oh dear. Well, because of your assistance in my exploration and establishment of the new colony, I will, albeit reluctantly, allow your continued ignorance of and practice against these new alcohol prohibition laws in hopes of the continuance of your assistance. As time passed, I realized the trustees were not going to keep their promise to pay me. They began imposing laws on my people, laws without which we had previously flourished for thousands of years. Although Oglethorpe valued me as an interpreter and hoped to reward me for my services, the trustees did not pay me, and I demanded my dues. A letter to the trustees. Huh. Oglethorpe's translator, Mary Mosgrove, is demanding payment for her 12 years as his interpreter. But that was three years ago. Indeed. We cannot pay her because of the new laws which prohibit us from doing so for anyone, regardless of status. I refuse to make an exception for her. Besides, her services are no longer needed. <laughs> what have we got to lose? That is unwise. Uh, oh. Mary has all the power she needs to pit her people against us. That is true. Is there anything we can do about this? Unfortunately, there is not. Mary is already causing quite a stir about it. On August 10th, 1749, Mary Musgrove, her husband, and the Indian chief Malachi led a band of Creek warriors through the streets of Savannah in protest against the trustees. They were promptly arrested for a short period of time. After realizing that the rules of the game had changed, Mary exchanged her Creek fighting style for the more civilized European and began to play by the Englishman's rules. After 20 years of land disputes with the unwilling trustees, Mary finally received her interpreter's payment of 2,100 pounds, as well as her royal inheritance, the island of St. Catharines, where she died three years later. Mary's gender and racial heritage combined to make her an apparent victim in a world dominated by white men. But today, we know her as the hero who defied the odds. Mary became a renowned negotiator and assisted Oglethorpe in his explorations, as well as eased his encounters with her people in a way no one else could have done. Mary played a huge part in the explorations of Oglethorpe. By displaying her diplomatic skills and her encounters with the English, she prompted the exchange of Indian culture and European traditions that helped make Georgia's establishment of the colony a success. Mary was truly a friend to the early colony, and her memory will remain for ages to come. Baby, sleep, sleep, sleep. Father has gone to find turtle shells. He said he'll come back tomorrow, tomorrow, baby, sleep. Thank you.